I flew the Japanese Zero, and that was an outstanding airplane as a fighter. It is probably one of the most maneuverable fighters I've ever flown in my life. But it had a dreadful Achilles heel. It was so light, the gauge of the metal that was used uh, to construct this aircraft was so thin <clears throat> that it could not take much in the way of punishment. And a third could survive reasonably well against 303 bullets. Once the 0.5 uh, machine gun bullet and the 20 millimeter cannon came into being, if you got a hit on the, the zero, you did it a lot of damage. The pilot was very unprotected, really. He had no bulletproof windscreen. He had very little, if any, armor plating um, protect him. So it, um, it was a very, very exposed situation for the Japanese pilot. to heaven like a skyrocket? Heaven's the wrong destination for that baby. That's a zero, the real McCoy. The Navy Zero was a very fine performance fighter and we'd had very little knowledge of that, knew nothing about it at all. But uh, it certainly did its stuff. But they all operated at very great height, and they were over before we had any warning of them, and so there were very few of them intercepted. And what uh, uh, attacks were made, the attacks that were made were really made by the artillery, because that was about the only thing that was there in time. We didn't have really any knowledge of the Japanese aircraft until we saw them at the, the, the time of the initial attack. And although I'd been up to Tungu in Burma with the American volunteer group, I even remember then that they had no real idea about the uh, Navy Zero. They knew there was a very good type, but they hadn't got uh, any actual practical experience of it. And yet they had been in operations against the Japanese in China all for many months beforehand, before they ever were in the normal war, before they actually, they had actually attacked uh, Pearl Harbor, or anything like that, because they were operating with the Chinese forces. And so they'd had a lot of fighting experience, but never had experienced contact with these Navy Zeros. So that was a new venture altogether. It was quite, an, quite a good aircraft. The fact was that we had underestimated the enemy. Uh, that is a very bad thing. You should never underestimate anybody either. And this was one of the weaknesses, that it had stemmed from, I think, not only our own forces, uh, idea of what they could do, but also the political element of what they could do. Nobody had really taken them in seriously, and this was a very great mistake. I never thought they would be successful. I don't know why, once they struck because it didn't seem to me that it was real, but their efficiency was quite marked because they'd had a lot of experience in war. They'd had that China campaign for some years, and they were doing training there for many, many months. And it wasn't until I was in the bag as a prisoner, that was later on, uh, that I realized that they'd had some training place, which was eventually turned out to be one of the islands in the... Uh, Japan, Sea of Japan, somewhere there, like Okinawa. And I think it was at that time a young Japanese soldier showed me a picture of uh, a girl in a white um, flying suit that I thought was, was that Amelia? Uh, Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart. The wings in the fuselage are in one piece made of dual aluminum. Uh, there's another feature worth noting. 
The entire fuselage is flush riveted. With the result, there are very few protuberances to cause wind resistance. The length is 28 feet, 5 inches. There's a pair of machine guns mounted in grooves above the cowling. They're 7.7 millimeter, and they're synchronized to fire through the propeller. Tail. Leading edge of flat surface tapers more than trailing edge, with the fuselage extending to a point beyond it. Leading edge of vertical piece tapers more than trailing edge. Tail is pointed, curves out away from the nose. I guess that's it, sir. We, we all, of course, had high hopes when the Hurricanes were sent out to Singapore. Um, but the Hurricanes uh, never really got going, and they were shot down um, really very quickly, although they did, they did magnificent work, um, I think. Uh, we don't, we, it's very difficult to assess uh, how much um, good work they did, because most of the Japanese concerned are dead anyway, and you can't really, and, and most of the hurricane pilots concerned are dead. So you can't really tell how much they diverted or made bombers drop their bombs um, prematurely or upset, you know, deterred them in any way. But certainly the Zero fighter was far, far superior. And, uh, and uh, I gathered uh, later on that um, the plans, the air, air ministry knew the specifications of the Zero fighter, and it was dovetailed in the air ministry, wherever they keep these things, and just forgotten about, uh, because they were engaged in the Battle of Britain. Um, the battle, well, the Battle of Britain was hardly over, but, I mean, the, the war was, you know, rarely going here, and this was right away in China, because apparently the British air attaché in China or military attaché, I don't know which it was, had visited the wreckage of a zero near Chongqing and had taken all the particulars and specifications that he could and he'd sent this lot back and it was pigeonholed. So they did know, but nobody, I think, took any cognizance of it at all. So it really, you know, we, we didn't know how effective they were. Equally, um, the intelligence um, uh, seems to have fallen over very much. I mean, we, we really didn't know. Certainly as a junior officer, we had no idea of the capabilities of the Japanese naval air arm. And I rather think that, um, uh, although, again, this was known in certain instances, I mean, they knew that there were torpedo bombers. Uh, one part of the intelligence bureau knew it. The other part didn't, and it wasn't passed over. That was in Singapore. And to say that the Japanese bombers ha hadn't got the range was nonsense. They'd already been over Singapore, and they could only have flown from Indochina. So there was, you know, there was... I don't think that the... Um, I think if one was going to criticise... Uh, I don't think that the high command in, uh, in Singapore was perhaps as on the ball as it should have been. あの、こう、こうですけどいいところで相手を前で飲めらせるんですかね。これはいわゆるカフト船の極意なんですね。ところがあ、グラマンさんとやる時にはそれもう向こうは承知してるからあ、スピットファイヤーだってね、背景だって
and the uh, we went up there, but of course we had nothing. We had no aircraft. We had no barrages. There was no no. We had no tools. No, all the toolkits were missing and everything. And then a few we managed to get out of a, somewhere. A few hurricanes. Somebody got out of. But the lads again, you see, they're hopelessly outnumbered. The the these Navy Zero fighters the Japanese had. Nobody knew anything about them. In fact, the information we were given was absolutely ridiculous. We were told that Japanese pilots were short-sighted. Well, I've never seen one miss a target. They were fantastic. What everybody was forgetting, they'd got about ten years behind them experience in China. They were fantastic pilots, and they were running rings around the hurricanes. And we realised, or, or at least the riggers and fitters realised, that these damned hurricanes had got sand filters on for the desert. Well, these were taken, the lads took these sand filters off. And that, that gave the hurricane about another 35 mile an hour speed. But even then, it couldn't turn as fast as a zero. The only way a hurricane could fight a zero was to climb and keep climbing and then dive, and if the zero tried to follow him, the wings folded on the zero, and down they went. They were, they were, I actually saw a zero after I was a prisoner, and how the damn things ever flew, I do not know, because oh, all it was was an engine. It was a flying engine, that's all it was. But of course, fantastic aircraft. It had got about a 900 horsepower an engine, and what they'd done, they'd put a shell of an aircraft, very light, Shell. It didn't even, they'd even sacrificed the tail wheel. And they had actually had a piece of bamboo that came down, it was fixed to the aircraft, that just bounced on the ground when it landed. They'd sacrificed every bit of weight to have, what was it now? They had two cannons and two machine guns, and everything was stripped to the bare minimum. So, of course, it could go at hell of a speed. It was faster than a hurricane. On the level, it was faster than a hurricane. It wasn't beat, it was, certainly the order can never beat the zero. The thing that beat the zero was the um, the um, American aircraft when they eventually came, you know, into the war. Wings, leading edge tapers, trailing edge tapers, tips rounded, slight dihedral angle. You might add to that that there are two 20 millimeter cannons mounted one in each wing, probably Swiss Ehrlichen guns. Yes, sir. There's something I didn't know about, sir. Huh? Oh, yes. The wingtips can be folded so as to utilize more space in a carrier. Incidentally, the span is 39 feet 4 inches. All right, go on with the engine. Engine, radial, Mitsubishi version of our cyclone. That's right. There are twin row 14 cylinders. Now for the fuselage. Fuselage. Blunt nose with a spinner on it. Cockpit canopy sits on the fuselage. Retractable landing gear with fairing plates. The only thing was, of course, the Japs had this invincible sort of aura about them, so there was a bit of, not apprehension, but wonder about, you know, what was going to happen when we got there. But we, we hadn't the least idea when we knew we were going to Australia. But whereabouts in Australia or the Far East, again, we didn't know. Having um, promised the Australian these three squadrons of men and spitfires, <laughs> um, which Churchill as I say, won the day. Halfway down the African coast in June 42, uh, there was a frantic call from Tedder, I gather, in the Middle East to say, we must have some aeroplanes. So despite all the promises, all our aeroplanes were diverted <laughs> to um, Takaradi, where they were assembled, flown across to the Middle East, and presumably took part in Al Alamein and all this, that and the other. So, we arrived in great style in Australia without any sport, without any Spitfires. We had the fives in England. The five C's were the same, but they had a much bigger air intake for tropical conditions. They were a sort of tropical Spitfire, same as they used in the Middle East. Well, the Zero was much more manoeuvrable. Uh, it wasn't wasn't as fast. And it couldn't dive as far as quickly. We were quicker in a dive. And I think 
giving time, we had the ceiling on them too. But as when it came to manoeuvrability, there was nothing to touch the zero. So you didn't mix it, really. You just had to hope you had height and, um, and could sort, sort of take advantage of the height above them. And normally, and I think now because, as we know, we didn't know at the time, they'd broken the um, Japanese Navy code, hadn't they? So um, we normally had warning of this, that they would, ops would ring up and say, you better be ready tomorrow because we think. In other words, they had warning of these chaps arriving in time or wherever it was. And they had some other warning. We didn't know this. We wondered how <laughs> Dickens ever knew. But, uh, and it was usually pretty accurate. They might not come the next day, but they would come the next. So, so we had fair warning. And providing the, the radar was working all right, um, we were usually at height in an inner position to, to attack. To you, radial engine. Perfect circle, broken only by oil cooler. Low wing. Cockpit canopy sits on cigar-shaped fuselage. Bunt nose. Stubby spinner. Oil cooler and air scoop. Fuselage tapering to point and rear. Closeness of wings to nose. Radial engine. Canopy close to nose. Tail pointed and curving out away from nose. Remember, on your recognition of the zero, they depend your life. Know it, so you can destroy it. This is the Japanese Zero. And the, this mark that was at, uh, uh, was Mark 5, or that. But when I got to the squadron, they had suddenly had an exchange yeah. to a Mark 8. Mark 8. And there was a big difference between the 5 and the 8, is that right? Oh, yeah. The difference was in climb, and mainly. The Japanese diner, reconnaissance aircraft, could climb faster, and we could follow. So a zero, I mean a fighter aircraft, a fair fighter, would have been even faster mm. to get out of the way. We were told by the commanding officer when we got on 54, do not get into a turning operation with a, with a zero, because you won't win. Mm. Their turning capacity is far greater than ours. Mm. They can wind it round faster than we can. And uh, if you're going to uh, tackle them straight through, zinc, fire, off, turn, come back, fire, off. Don't get into a round, 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 round. They were lighter aircraft than the Spitfire. Spitfire got this, this armor it. plating at the back and the various other things. Mm. And so it was heavier. Mm. And uh, whilst the Spit would turn uh, tight, better than the majority of the English aircraft, it couldn't be the, a zero. If a Zeke got on, a zero got on your tail, you, you went into a steep dive and turned left because a, a Zeke couldn't, a zero couldn't turn left. It had to turn right. You know, you had to assess all these things because different planes have their, um, well, same as boxes weigh up each other. Some 
boxes, you know, come with a left hook all the time, and, uh, mm. どっちかちょっとやっぱり左に見つめてますね。後につ,つ,なつながるときに楽だから、なんかこっち見てるときに思い切ってこっち回すのこれは大変ですからね。だからやっぱり関連性のあるところにどうしても行くようになりますね。プロペラはぐるぐる回ってますから、これはコマみたいなもんですからね。あのー、ものすごくその動かすときに振り回されるんですね。だから左回りのときと右回りのときは全然違うんですね。で日本の飛行機はエンジンは全部こう右後ろから引っ張るとのから右回りなんですけどイギリスなんかはねロースルーのスピットワイヤーは初めは右回りだったのはエンジンパワーアップしたこの逆回りにしちゃった原則歯車の関係でパイロットはねその最初に振り回され方が違うんですねで偉く戸惑ったということが書いてあるね